So my wife, she's been trying to coerce me into investing into this business she just started, guys. Let me tell you, my wife... She's never been interested in anything. She's a stay-at-home mom. She doesn't even go to college, no education. She doesn't want to do anything to do with entrepreneurship or something along those lines. So imagine my surprise when all of a sudden she wants to start this business and she doesn't even want to tell me the details about it. Oh, and by the way, she's been seeing a friend at the gym. Let me tell you about this friend. This is incredibly weird for me. You know, especially because I'm a man who's in my 30s. I don't usually show my feelings or anything like that, so this is incredibly awkward. But my life has been going downhill so badly, it's actually insane. Let me start this off by telling you guys about the relationship I have with my wife. We got married almost uh, six years ago. and I'd say I thought it would last forever. We met during college, and at first we didn't really like each other. We were in different classes but had mutual friends, so we hung out quite a bit. The thing is, we had to hang out with each other because we were part of this big group that always hung out and so we basically saw each other almost every day. The reason we started talking was that she needed help with something from my course. And even though she was hesitant to ask me for help because we bickered a lot, she came forward anyways and that's when we started hanging out separately. She would come over to my dorm and I would go to hers. Slowly, we realized that we actually really liked hanging out with each other. But it's not like we did not bicker when we did become friends. In fact, I think we started bickering even more. But that was the fun part. That was what made me fall in love with her. It was hard to accept I was in love with her because Emily was gorgeous. She had blonde hair, hazel eyes, and she was perfection in my eyes. And... I never thought that she would be able to love me back at all, so I never even gathered the courage to confess or ask her out. It was after we became super close and this other guy started hitting on her that I realized that I needed to do something about this or else I was going to lose her. The good thing for me, though, was that she liked me back and then we started dating. So we got married as soon as we got out of college. It's been six years since then and we've been living very happy lives. I have a nice stable income, so we're doing good financially as well. And I try and give Emily everything she's ever wanted in life. Any memberships, any trips, any gifts that she actually wanted, I try to get it for her. I love seeing her happy and filled with joy, and I always thought that she thought the same about me. Because I genuinely thought that we were the most perfect couple to ever exist. That was until she decided to take advantage of my love and stab me in the back. Again, more backstory on how she did that. She joined a gym. You might be wondering what some random gym has to do with this, but that's what started all this in the first place. Emily was never motivated to do something on her own. Start her own business, do a job, or anything like that. She was a stay-at-home wife, and both of us, we didn't really mind it. Of course, I would have supported her in whatever she decided to do. If she wanted to be a stay-at-home wife, I was okay with it. If she wanted to start a job or start working, I was also okay with that as well. So when she told me she wanted to start up her own business, I was very happy for her. It started around a month after she started to go to the gym. She found this girl whom she became friends with and almost as soon as she joined the gym, they became friends. They'd constantly go out on these coffee runs after the gym or run errands together and honestly, I was pretty happy for her. Emily has always been an incredible social person, but we moved recently and since she doesn't know anybody here, she hasn't been able to go out and have as much fun as she likes to. So now that she found somebody to do this with, I was very happy for her. I even encouraged her to hang out with her more and more, and she seemed like a nice person as well. Oh boy, was I wrong about that. Around a few months ago, Emily came up to me and told me that her, well, she and her friend were planning on starting a business. I was shocked because she never mentioned anything like that to me, but I was supportive because I wanted her to do whatever made her happy. When I asked her for the details, she said that she was still not sure because they were discussing everything right now. I was a bit perplexed because how do you know you're starting a business but don't know which business you're starting? 
Do you know what I mean? I mean... Either way, I told her she could do whatever she wanted because I had her back, but she took it the wrong way, I guess. Because then she got worse as the time went by. She would not tell me any details about the person or anything related to the business. She would say that they were still discussing and she didn't want me to know anything before it was finalized. So I told her. I could probably help them out, but she did not like that as well. She started to fight with me on it because she thought that I was undermining her and not letting her and her potential shine like they were supposed to. Then she told me I was just trying to make myself the big and smart person because I wanted to have her stay at home as she did now forever. That could not be farthest from the truth, but I didn't want her to think that anymore, so I completely stopped asking questions. The only time I would actually talk about her quote business was when she would bring it up, then too, she would not tell me anything or even give me even the minuscule details. She just tells me that they're still in the talking phase about it, and you know what? She is very, very excited. If I had questions, she would get a bit cranky, so I would usually just nod my head or even stay completely quiet. Then one day, she came to me and started asking me if I would like to invest in her business, Mind you guys, at that point, I didn't know anything about it either, and I mean nothing. Heck, I didn't even know the name of the business partner that she was starting the business with. <laughs> Obviously, like a normal person, I told her that I could not invest in this until I, uh, I don't know, knew more about what it actually was. That's when she gets really mad at me and starts ranting again about how I don't care for her and how I didn't really let her embrace the business-minded brain that she had. It was starting to bother me how she turned every single thing into an argument, so I told her that I would not invest until I knew exactly what I was getting myself into. I made sure to let her know I would not budge, even if she tried to emotionally blackmail me, which she was already doing. That day, Emily did not return back to the house for the entire night. According to her, she slept at her business partner's house the one that she would not even tell me the name of. I was starting to get really mad at how childish she was acting, so I screamed at her. It wasn't really screaming, but I was just replying to her as calmly as I normally do. If she was screaming, I was screaming, and if she was being nice to me, I was being nice to her. Because she saw how I wasn't budging, she understood that she needed to give me something to work with or else I was going to lose it. So, she gave me a name. A name, that's it. She said all she could offer to give me was the name of the person that she was going to start the business with and nothing more. At this point, I was actually frustrated with her so much at how she was acting that I was glad that she was actually telling me anything. Something. That's why I just took the name and did not say anything else. But the name was Alex. Days later, I realized how generic the name Alex is, and honestly, I could do nothing with the name if I didn't know anything else about it. How could I be so sure that the money that I was going to invest would actually bring me more money instead of making me go to a negative? Emily, maybe my wife, but I knew I had to make a smart decision about finances because Emily did not know jack crap about anything money-related. The thing that was making me mad the most was that Emily kept insisting that I gave her a lot of money so that she could invest it in her business. Yeah, even when I said no, she would just keep on pestering me and told me that I needed to give it up because I was her husband. I mean, that doesn't really make any sense to me because if I was her husband, then she should have told me every little detail about the business, but she didn't. She's going around planning this with somebody else and... She's not even telling me anything, so why? Why, why, why would I invest in it if I don't even know what's happening? One day, I was actually feeling really, uh, nice. So I told her I was going to think about it and then let her know, but she got me mad and told me that I needed to give it to her without any hesitation from now on. Again, I asked her what the business was, but she wasn't telling anything. So I started to get actually suspicious. The reason I'm getting suspicious was because she would be talking on the phone all day, every day. But as soon as I entered the room, she hangs up the phone. I told her that she could talk to her friends in front of me and I wouldn't mind it. But she insisted that she didn't want me to know. I knew things were getting out of hand. 
when she started stealing money from me. This one time I was at work when I got a call from my bank telling me that the huge transaction has been trying to take place. Obviously, I panicked a bit because I didn't know what's happening. But then I called Emily and asked her if she knew what was happening, only to find out that she was trying to get some money for investments. I was shocked by her behavior because I never thought that she would stoop down to this level to try to steal money from me. Then I realized that it seemed very odd that she was going through this much effort just to get me to invest in some business that she came up with alongside her gym buddy. So, I knew I needed to do some research to get to the bottom of this. I wasn't exactly sure how to get to the bottom of this because Emily was very, very smart. You see, she never let anything slip and would never leave things hanging around. Just as I was thinking about how to get it done, a few days passed by and Emily started to ask me for money again. The audacity she had to be asking me for money when she literally tried to steal it from me in the first place is insane. And I knew I could not let her get away with this anymore. I could have fought her on this, but I knew I was going to do something about it either way, so I told her. I would genuinely think about it and let her know in a week. That changed into days because Emily kept insisting that a week was too long of a wait and I needed to come to a decision as soon as possible. In those days, I thought of following her to the gym to see who she actually hung out with, but that seemed too creepy and stalkerish in my opinion, so I got into her phone instead. It was a really hard task because it was password protective, of course, and she never left her phone alone either, but somehow I managed to work my way through it. Basically, what I did was try to see if I could catch her writing in her passcodes on her phone. Once that was done, I waited until she slept to try to get into her messages to see what was actually going down. What I found out made my world come crashing down right there and then. Not only did I find out that they weren't just business partners, I found out that there was no business in the first place. Let me explain. So... I opened up her phone and went to the chat to find somebody named Alex, and when I did, I found out that Alex was not a girl. Alex was a guy. My wife was having an affair with another guy right in front of my face and disguised it as a business. The messages were filled with hearts and cute lovey-dovey messages to one another, and Emily kept complaining about how she just wanted to live with them instead of me because I clearly wasn't keeping her happy. All because I would not give her the investment money. Which, by the way, weren't even needed for the investments because there was no business that Alex and Emily were starting. They wanted to take all the money from the investors that they've gotten and just run away, a rug pool. Move to another country and start a new life with each other. I was horrified as I kept reading the messages. I didn't know what to do or what to think and at first I thought of waking Emily up just to give her a piece of my mind but that was far too risky. I didn't want her to leave without me taking any sort of lesson to her for doing this to me, and I knew that they'd already gotten quite a few investors including in this as well, so they could still run away if they knew that I was on to them. I needed to play this strategically. Even though I wanted to go and beat up Alex to a pulp, I could not do that just yet. It's been almost a week since this happened, and the days have been torturous. Every time I saw her face, I wanted to punch her square in the nose. However, I'm still thinking of a perfect way to ruin her life and make her realize that she can't just play with me and my emotions like that because we will fight back. Update number one. I found a perfect way to get my revenge on Emily as it's been so satisfying to put that into action and yes, it's crazy. So basically, I knew I had to expose her and show other people that she took money from, well, that is what she was planning at least. Once everyone knew what was happening, no one would give them any money and they would be doomed. One night, I spent hours collecting every single chat log from her phone. I mean, screenshotting it and then sending it back to my phone meticulous process. I had to be quick because Emily was a very light sleeper and she could wake up at any minute if I made too much noise. Then the entire plan would be ruined because she would know that I'm onto her. After I sent myself all of the chat messages, I went to get the names of the investors as well. 
But Emily was starting to wake up, and I did not want to take any risk, so I let it be for that night. I also started recording all her calls with Alex. Even though she would not want to be in the room, I'd slide the phone or keep the phone on the dresser before leaving the room. That was how I was keeping track of every single conversation that they were having with each other. Later, almost a few days, I managed to collect the names of the investors and also the amount of money that they've been paid, as I knew everything about that in case I needed to convince them that I wasn't saying anything false. Besides, I also had screenshots of proof if I ever needed to get some extra information to prove I was not lying. So, I started this on the day Emily was out for hours on end. She first went to the gym, and then she planned on spending the day with her quote business partner. So, she was indeed gone for hours on end. I took advantage of that and called every single investor that they had taken money from and let them know exactly what was going on. They had so many people that they had taken money from that it took me almost three hours to actually get done calling everybody. A lot of the people actually uh, spent way too much time on the phone with me because they could not believe that they were just getting scammed like that. Mostly those were the people who gave a lot of money, so they were pretty devastated that this was happening. I also had to send them screenshots of the chats between Alex and Emily to further show that I was serious about the entire thing and not just joking around. So, once everybody knew what exactly was happening, they all started to pull the investments back. Some who had already given Emily the money demanded that she returns it right this instant. It felt like a chain reaction, honestly. I mean, when Emily came back home, she starts getting all these phone calls from people demanding the money, or refusing to give her any more. It lasted for quite a few days, and every day I would come home from work and see her sitting on the couch, tense and stressed out. Then she'd tell me all about it and I had to pretend to be devastated for her sake. This one time, she was super angry when I got home and I realized that it's because of this entire mess as well. She starts being really mean to me about the entire situation and I just realized I wasn't going to let her treat me this way. She did this more times than I could count before all of this happened and whenever there was something wrong in her life, she would get angry and then take it all out on me. It happened so much that I even stopped being offended. I mean, if she said anything rude to me during those times. However, I wasn't going to handle it this time because this time, when she starts telling me it was my fault and that the business would have bloomed already if I had just paid my part of the investment, I snapped. I told her that I knew this was not an investment and that she was planning to run away with Alex. Guys... The absolute shock on her face was so satisfying, but it got so much better once I told her I was the one who told everybody that she was a scam. I told her everything that I've done, from calling everybody up and telling them what they did to taking screenshots of her chat messages with Alex and sending them to the investors as well. She gets so angry, it was actually a bit scary. We said some things to one another, and I'd rather not repeat it here, and she left. She grabbed a bag and left, telling me that she was going to stay with Alex because he was a much better partner than I was. It's been about three days since she's been gone, and we've got no contact from her at all. I don't know where she is or what she's doing, but I honestly just don't care. Update number two. Hey guys, so I am back with another update, and well... I thought I was done with Emily for life, but she's left her entire life's worth of a mess for me to deal with. But guys, let me go into a bit more detail. It's been five days since Emily's left to go to Alex's house. I thought she would be dealing with all the mess that she made herself, but she's just left it all behind. All the investors constantly keep calling me, telling me I need to pay them back the amount that Emily had, but even when I tell them that I have no control over anything that she does, they don't want to listen. They don't want to hear it. To what I had to say and just kept repeating that I need to pay up. Are they going to get the police involved? Since they kept bothering me with everything, I started to call Emily a lot. I called her every single minute of every single day of every single hour and yet she wouldn't answer. Oh, at this point, I start to get aggravated and start calling Alex as well. I got his number when I was taking screenshots of everything and saved it on my phone. 
I knew it was going to come in handy one day, and guess what? It did. But for some reason, even Alex would not pick up the phone. I was getting really anxious because investors kept calling me and pestering me about giving them money. Money that I did not have. Maybe Emily thought I was rich. Because I fulfilled every single desire of hers, but I was not rich. I'm broke. I used to spend all my savings into keeping her happy so you can expect me to go bat crazy throughout all this. Things got intense when this one investor called me and told me that he would drag me to the police station himself if I did not pay him off. I kept telling him that this isn't me who borrowed the money because Emily didn't even let me know the name of the business partner or the name of the business, but you know what? They wouldn't listen. I mean, I kind of get what they're going through, because it was a lot of money that Emily took from them, but I was disappointed about why I was being dragged into all this. I just kept calling Emily and hoping that she would pick up until one day I got a message from her. It was one single message that was shorter than four lines, but you know what? It did just the job at conveying what she wanted to say. She told me that she was running away with Alex and she didn't want me to contact her anymore because she's gone. I figured she was running away with the money that she collected from the investors. I knew I had to stop her or do something drastic about it before this all came down crashing on me. That's why I took her to the police. I went to the station and showed them all the chats and recordings that I've taken from Emily's phone, along with investors and their chats. I told them every single thing about what Emily did and how she scammed all of them and took a lot of money. At that point, Emily had started to get ready to run and... I knew that if we spent too much time trying to find her, she could just leave the city. The only thing that was keeping me in check was the fact that she did not get a lot of money from the investors because most of them pulled out before they handed in. So, she didn't have that kind of money she needed to escape the country and sustain a life. I went to the place yesterday and they told me that they would find Emily and sort all of this out soon enough. So, I'm just waiting and hoping that everything gets back to normal and I get rid of her and her clever antics that seem to have ruined my life. Update number three. The police found Emily and Alex. I'm glad they did because I was tired of everybody calling me and insisting I do something about this because honestly, I'm done. I mean, I couldn't handle the constant pressure of having to answer everyone. I told the investors I had gone to the police for this and that they would be handling it, but there was no guarantee of the money because we didn't know when Emily and Alex would be caught, which is also why they kind of got under pressure, and I guess they took it out on me so I had to block everybody. But then the police found Emily and Alex almost two days after I went to the station to file the complaint. I thought that was going to be the end of the story right then and there, and that Emily and Alex would just go to the jail so I'd be free of them. But as it turns out, they had the right to get a lawyer to fight me on this. I'm not exactly sure of what grounds they possibly could have, but thinking it has something to do with my name being on Emily's documents or something like that, I'm not exactly sure. But I'm so sick and tired of everything that's been going on that I just want this to end. This is why I'm going to make sure that I hire the best lawyer in the whole country if I have to to help me deal with this case. I want it to be dealt with once and for all. The thing that's making me so mad is that Emily is so sure that she's going to win the case too. That she's actually been taunting me and sending me all these messages all day long where she's just sending me laugh emojis. Telling me she's going to ruin me. I can't believe this is somebody I used to love. Somebody I used to do everything for. I never thought I'd see the day when Emily actually turns out to be evil and tries to ruin my life. She was such an angel every single time and that's why I fell for her. I fell in love with her. So to see her acting like this is very hard on me as well. Not just that, her boyfriend Alex is also taunting me and telling me I could not even keep a woman happy. It's making me want to go even harder on this, so I'm spending all my waking days gathering evidence and making sure to communicate well with my lawyer so that we can land both of these idiots in jail without any hassle at all. Final update. We won! 
It was very obvious that we were going to win the case because they had no grounds or basis to stew me. I made sure to get a lot of evidence because Emily and Alex seemed so sure that they were going to win though. It was actually making me a bit scared. So my lawyer and I decide to gather a lot of evidence. We're just making sure the case is so strong they would not even have the opportunity to be able to fight back. Honestly, we didn't even need to gather that much evidence. You know why? They lost the case badly on their own. I mean, it was kind of useless for them to come over to the court because anybody could tell <laughs> we were going to win. Either way, they were both sent to jail and they've got a few years that they need to settle before they can come out. Seeing the expression on their face as they realized that I managed to ruin their life and you know what, it's not vice versa, was incredibly satisfying. They were so, so angry at everything that happened that they had the gaze in them that made me feel like they'd do anything to get back at me. Of course, they couldn't really do much because both of them were going to jail for now, and they would rot there for months before being able to see the light of day. Not only that, but they also had to pay back everybody whose money they've stolen, and because they used a good chunk of it, Alex had to pay it off from his own savings. So... They're definitely in a loss. A few days go by, and I'm really happy with how life is going now. It's peaceful, it's calm, so... Here I was, minding my own business, and guess what arrives in my mailbox? That's right, a letter from my ex, Emily. One might think, whoa, what does she want now? I expect the usual post-divorce crap. But boys, this letter was on another level. She was spilling her heart out on paper, talking about how she found guilt in prison, learned some life lessons, and basically wanted me to forgive her, bail her out of jail so that she could come live with me again. A meeting was scheduled, the first since the courtroom drama began, and you know what? I saw Emily for the first time, sitting across from me wearing a prison uniform. She had a deep sense of regret in those eyes, which had once been full of dreams and aspirations that both of us shared but I wasn't going to give up this easy. She ruined my life. There's no guarantee that she wasn't going to do it again. I told her I was not going to entertain any more of her dramas and to stop spending time and money sending me letters and using the prison phone to call me. Just to beg me to take her back, it's pathetic. Because I wasn't going to. Finally, putting all of this behind me felt so good and so relieving that I didn't want her in my life anymore. So... This is my final update. Thank you for the support throughout this entire post. So when I was reading this story, I was just wondering over and over, why is OP even entertaining his wife at this point? He needs to separate himself as far as he can from her. And the fact that after she got caught, after she was sent to prison, she's still writing him notes about how she's changed, how she's forgiven him. And you know what? Almost everybody in the comment section, they were like, we see right through this. She's not changing. She's just trying to use you to get out of the predicament that she's in, post the bail, give her a place to stay after she gets out of jail. Yeah, we've seen this before. Anyways, guys, I do want to hear your thoughts on it. If you found yourself in OP's position and you had to deal with this woman, what would you do about it, guys? Let's talk about it down below in our comment section. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day, and I'd say the best way to see more stories is subscribing to all three of my channels. That way you will never run out of juicy stories. The channels are as followed, Mr. Redito Animated, Mr. Redito Stories, which is the channel you're on now, and Mr. Redito's Revenge. You can find all those down below in the pinned comment, or just use the search bar above and type in those names. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.